You are listening to the Life Coach Business Podcast, episode number 73. Welcome to the Life Coach Business Podcast, a show for coaches who are ready to up-level their business and take their impact, leadership, and results to a whole new level. If you're ready to start taking powerful action and become the leader your business needs in order to grow and thrive, this show is for you. I'm your host, Amanda Karlstad, certified life and business coach and entrepreneurial leadership expert. Now let's get down to business. Hello and welcome everyone. So glad to have you with me today. I'm so excited to bring you today's show. I have a very special guest. I have a client, Sarah Brewer, who's on the show today. This is the second client interview that I'm bringing to you over the next several weeks. I've got uh, a series of client interviews and some other very special guests that will be coming on the show. And I'm super excited to bring you these conversations. And today's conversation is really special. Sarah just graduated from my foundational program, my business accelerator program. It's called the Mastermind. So for those of you who may be new to the show, the Mastermind is my foundational program that most clients start in. It's really uh, the program that I've developed to take you from wherever you are to six figures in the most accelerated way. And so you're going to hear today from Sarah and learn how she was able to cross the six-figure mark during our time together. And I'm so, so proud of her and the work that she's doing. She has grown tremendously through her process. Obviously, her business has grown tremendously through this process. And this is just the beginning uh, for her and for what is ahead for her. So I'm really excited for you to hear more about her journey and really how this unfolded for her. And with that, Let's get to the show. All right. I am so excited. I have a very special guest for you all today. I have one of my clients, Sarah, with us today. And I'm so excited for this conversation. I think you're going to learn a ton and hear all about Sarah's journey as a coach and what she's really done in the past year, which is really really amazing. So I'm super excited for all of you to hear this. So with that, welcome, Sarah. Well, hi, thank you. I'm so excited to be here too. I love it. I love it. This is going to be so much fun. All right. So before we dive into all the good stuff, let's talk about, why don't you just introduce yourself and talk about who you are, kind of your journey into coaching, who you coach, that sort of thing. We'll start there. Yeah. So just get this out of the way. What I do is I I coach people who want to quit viewing pornography and it's in a shame-free sex positive approach. Um, how far back do you want me to start on my journey? Whatever you think is relevant. So you've got all sorts of coaches listening to you right now. Okay. Well, I, so I first got into coaching. Um, I was just in a transition period in my life. Just had a baby, um, just graduated college and not happy, just kind of feeling yucky. And yeah, and where that was mostly coming from was I was just always trying to do more to feel better, do more to feel better. And it wasn't working. And then I found the Life Coach School Tools and I found Jody Moore and I found Brooke Castillo and I just became obsessed. It was like, I don't know if you, just that feeling like when you know something is so true and so right. Um, when I think about finding that, I, I really feel just like this light kind of coming over me and learning just the really simple concept that your thoughts create your feelings, not your actions. And when I say that now, right, it sounds so basic and simple, but I didn't know that before. And that was so Anyways, just life changing, really, really important for me. And I just loved it. I just knew, like, from the moment I found it, I just knew I have to go, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to learn everything I can about this. And then that turned into I have to teach this. I have to coach this. I have to become a coach because I loved it so much. It helped me so much just figure out how to even, you know, you have this vision of what you want to do in life and you have no idea how to do it. And that's what coaching gave me. So I started doing that. I started coaching just a little bit more 
general um, life coach, just whatever people wanted help with. I went and I got certified at the life coach school. And then right after certification, I decided to narrow in my niche to helping people who want to quit porn. And the reason I did that is because there were so many, what, what I was finding with the people I was talking to is a lot of them came to me with that specific thing that they wanted to fix. And so when I decided to niche down, that was really scary for me. And I... Why? Let's talk about that. Why? <laughs> it was scary for me <laughs> because I felt I had the tools to help people with that mm-hmm. problem, but I hadn't actually gone through it myself. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so I had a lot of drama about that. Okay. And can I help someone even if I haven't done that specific thing? And the answer that I know now is yes, absolutely, because I have just in different ways. Right. 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 And that's really the power of of coaching, right? Mm-hmm. So what let's let's just stay there for a minute. What belief or what when you think back to that moment in time, when you were kind of battling that within yourself, what helped you overcome that specifically? Like what, what thought, what type of beliefs did you cultivate to help you Mm -hmm. overcome that? Yeah. So my husband and I had been studying business already for a couple of years. And one thing Mm -hmm. that we just heard over and over and over again, my husband was in a business program and it's like an entrepreneurship program. And they just taught over and over again. We talked about this was listen to your audience, listen to your audience. Yeah. Like what they want is what you want to create. Mm. And so that is really kind of the big thing that was like, this is what they're telling me. Right. This is the big pain point. This is this is where I'm going to go to make the biggest difference. Right. And to just that there there wasn't really anyone out there that I knew of that was teaching how to quit porn in a shame free sex positive way, which is huge, which is so important. Right. Um, and so, so much better. Yeah. I mean, I remember our first call, Sarah, this was, so we've been working together since really July, it was July of last year. So of 2020, I think it was July. And I remember our first call when I asked you, you know, what, what type of coaching do you do? Like, who do you help that sort of thing? And what really hit me right away with the work that you do that I knew, I knew there was, of course, going to be you know, a lot of probably inner kind of dialogue that we needed to overcome with all of this. But from like an overall, Mm -hmm. like business standpoint, you know, one thing I'm always looking at with clients is like, from a strategic lens also like, okay, is, is what we're focusing on? Mm -hmm. Is this a good fit? Like, is there a market? Right. And what was so interesting when I first talked to you, I had never really encountered a coach doing this work. And I thought, what a cool way to serve probably a very, a population, right? Or a a large group of people that are not being served in this way right now. And and we're going to talk a little bit later about what Mm -hmm. that has actually transpired Mm -hmm. and how many you've actually helped in just the six months that we've been together, because it's really phenomenal. But I, you know, and you and I have talked about this, but I think that your work is very unique because there, you know, it is, it is in many ways, Um, something that isn't, I don't think, being addressed on a large scale, right? And there's a lot of people that are looking for help. And so it's really amazing to see you step up and really kind of own that role with this. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's it's a little bit taboo too. Like people don't really want to talk about it. And I and I think that's why I, I really think that's why I've done so well here is because I'm not afraid to say porn. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not afraid to talk about it. And I know like I know not a lot of people want to share my stuff. I've gotten messages on my Instagram that's like, I love what you do, but like how can I help you? Cause I don't want to mm-hmm. share. Yeah. You know? Okay. But it's it's been fine. Like it hasn't that hasn't kept me from helping people or having clients. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been really, I want to acknowledge you on that because you're right. This can be a very kind of triggering thing. It can be very taboo. Not a lot of people are talking about it. So I just want to applaud you for really standing in this work and really creating what you're creating to help all of the men and women that you're helping Mm -hmm. through your program. And we're going to talk about what that looks like. So that's awesome. So let's talk about when you you and I started working together. 
where was your business at the time? Like, where were you just personally, mentally, like your business? What was going on? Yeah. So I had just finished LCS certification and I just had another baby. I had a newborn yeah. and I, was, I had just kind of come back into working after like a couple months after having her and I had just ne- like niche down too. And as soon as I niched down, it was like, I was having all these people that wanted to work with me and I was full and I was full and I should have felt great because I was full, <laughs> but I didn't. I felt Every horrible. Every coach's dream, right? But you, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. And I, I remember posting on like some of the coaching, you know, groups on Facebook, yeah. like, what do I do? Yeah. And they're like, wow, this is amazing. I'm like, I do not feel amazing because I, I was, I was like, first off, I'm stressed because I don't know what to do with all these people. Yeah. And I don't want to work more than 20 hours a mm-hmm. week. And I have no idea how to hit my income goal and work 20 hours a week. And I'm supposed to just do one-on-one for a long time, right? Like, that's just what you're supposed to do. <laughs> and right. so, so people told me to raise my prices and I did yeah. and I didn't sell anything Yeah, from those raised prices. It just yeah. wasn't, it yeah. wasn't right. And so that's when I found you and I booked a call and it's like, I, like, I know people want this. I know I can help them, but I don't know. I don't know how to reach my income goals and my business and my impact mm-hmm. goals. I need someone to help me figure out how to do that. Yeah. And still business. maintain the, in your schedule, right? Those 20 hours, like you mm-hmm. said, like, I remember that was a really big deal for you. And I remember like, that was the, one of the things that I kind of was from the get go, like my brain kind of went to work on like, okay, how do we, how do we do this in a way that, you know, really allows you that space and that time to be a new mom. And, you know, you, you and I've talked, I, I think I shared with you and I'll share with the audience right now. So I, um, when I launched my practice, I had a newborn as well. (laughs) I I wasn't planning, right? Like it was um, just the timing of it all kind of, it all came together, you know, at once. And you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. It was, of course, perfect, but it but it was a challenge in those early days, right? Having a newborn that you know at that point wasn't we weren't ready to send them to daycare. It was like you know juggling all of the things, and so I had some sense of what that is like as a new mom and and juggling a new business, and um, wanted to really make sure that we help create that for you because I know from my own personal experience how important that time really is. And uh, before you and I just got on, yeah, and I, I so, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and I, I so appreciated that too, because I kind of came into our call expecting you to be like, well, like if you want to reach this income goal, we got to hustle. Yeah. You got, yeah. You got to sacrifice a little bit. And just even just that first call with you, like opened up my mind. It's like what you, what you want, you can have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just, I so appreciated that because I didn't think like just coming out of LCS certification for some reason in my mind, I was like, nope, I, I have to do it this way right. for right. a while. Well, let's talk about that for a minute because I think you, you're you bringing up a really good point that I don't know that we talk a whole lot about. And I observe this a lot. I see this a lot kind of in the industry where, you know, depending on like what certification program you go through or maybe you don't, but sometimes we feel like we have to do it a certain way because a certain person says we do, right? Or because a certain person Mm -hmm. maybe did it that way in their business. And what I will always say is I think that there's always, there's always consistent things, no matter what niche you're in, no matter how long you've been coaching, no matter what your goals are, there, there are certain things that need to be in place in your business. But what I have found is that Mm -hmm. it's really important that we build a business that is in alignment with both your skills as a coach, but also that helps you really optimize everything in your life, (laughs) like being a mom, right? And being, Mm -hmm. you know, available and having more of that flexibility. Because the truth is, is when we don't have those things, we're just, we are in the hustle, right? And sometimes there is there are phases where that that is what it is, right? There isn't a whole lot more to really say about mm-hmm. that. But when we can really be intentional about that from the beginning, I think that not only helps you enjoy the process a little bit more, helps you, you know, be clearer on kind of the vision and more kind of, I guess, helps you kind of develop the belief there. At least that's what I, I observe. 
I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But it just, it, in a way, it helps kind of drive you forward. I think when you know, like, oh, this is like when you can see the possibility with it. Does that make sense? What was your Yeah, well, and like as soon as, yeah, when I, um, when my mind started opening up a little bit, like, okay, maybe I can create my income goals and work 20 hours a week. I started finding all this evidence for why I was good enough to do that. And now, oh, actually I have been coaching for over a year, even though I just finished certification. Mm -hmm. Yep. I have been coaching for a long time and I have the experience and Mm -hmm. everything that I grew up and did up before I started coaching, you know, is helping me here. And anyways, just like you said, yeah, it's, um, it kind of pushed me into that belief. Yeah. Great. So let's talk a little bit about your last really six months and what has, what you've built, like what is going on in your business, like where you're at today, because I think it's, y'all, it's amazing. So I'm super proud of you. So tell us, tell us what's happened. Yeah. So since working with you, well, I guess since last March, so a year from today, mm-hmm. I've, I've made $103,539. Nice. Dollars. And since working with you, that was um, $85,590. Amazing. So that's where I'm so, at income wise. <laughs> so in 12 months, what I want to highlight here and just I want to stay here for a minute because I know this is one thing that I know we've talked a little bit about is just really recognizing what you've done, right? Like really seeing all of the growth. And I want to highlight you for a minute. So you have now surpassed the six figure benchmark, which for a lot of coaches, that's kind of that first huge benchmark. So First off, congratulations. It's huge. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy. (laughs) It's happened quick, right? Um, It's happened very quick. Yeah. It just happened. It happened quick and it was my impossible goal. And for the first little bit, I didn't even think it was on the table. (laughs) Right. Right. So can we talk about that? So a year, let's talk about where you were essentially March a year ago. Yeah, 2020 to today. Did you think that you would hit a hundred thousand in your business? No, no. <laughs> what were you thinking? I was thinking I am too pregnant. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I cannot do that. Um, I was thinking I can't even sell a four hundred dollar coaching package. Mm. I don't even know how to. Like I was thinking a lot, my niche, they don't want to spend money yeah. like that. So yeah. Most of my most of my clients are like 18 to 30. A lot of them are college age. And I was thinking they don't have money for coaching. I was thinking I need to, yeah, I need to sell them $400 coaching packages and I couldn't even do that. I was There's no way. I have no idea how I'm going to do this. What do you believe today about all of those things? Well, I believe that my coaching is very affordable. Mm-hmm you know, the program is affordable and like, it's worth every single penny. And of course they have money for it. Of course they have money for it and they want to pay for it. Not only do they have money for it, but it's what they want to spend their money on. I believe that whatever I'm, I'm wanting and desiring is attainable. So, and, and that being, you know, a mom isn't in conflict with my business, Mm. but you know, having a business and being a coach helps me way more as a mom. First off, because yeah. I'm happier because <laughs> I don't have to be with them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I love them, but I don't want to be with them. I, I relate. I relate completely. <laughs> and I, and like it forces me to be really intentional in my business and not waste time. Yeah. So how many hours are you working a week? I think 25 right now. And you're making six figures in your business. Yeah. How much that's so cool. It's amazing. So tell us how how we've walk us through a little bit. So you were coaching one on one when we first talked last Mm -hmm. July. And I knew immediately if you wanted to work those 25 hours a week that we needed to (laughs) change your business model a little bit. We needed to take a look at your program. So tell us how you have changed that over the course of the last few months. 
Yeah, sure. So first I, um, instead of hour coaching calls, we moved it to half hour coaching calls and I had all my teachings. I recorded all of the teachings so they could watch those before, do the worksheets, do some of the learning, and then we could just come and do the coaching together. Right. Cause even, I mean, after half an hour of hard coaching, they're usually exhausted, right? I don't really <laughs> want a lot more than that. And so that was better for them and for me. And then I recorded, so I recorded all the teachings. I put that into a portal and we, we turned that into a coaching program. So now they join and they get all of the modules, they get bonus modules, and then weekly coaching calls with me where they can hop on, they can participate anonymously or um, not anonymously and get help and coaching and listen to other people get coached. And that was so much better too, because you know, I was to the point where a lot of my clients were coming to me with just the same things and we were kind of doing the same mm. stuff. And I yeah. knew it would help them a lot to just hear other people. And I've yeah. seen that. I've seen that they were making progress a lot quicker than they were when it was just one-on-one, right? My, my clients yes. would come to these live group calls, progress a lot quicker. And then they also get access just to me through an, a, a coaching board where they can ask questions and get coaching back and forth in between um, weekly sessions. Nice. Nice. And then I and then I still offer one on one packages yeah. too. And you do have those that are pretty much filled at this point, right? Those are mm-hmm. those one on one spots. Yeah. Yeah. So what I love about your model, Sarah, is that, you know, number one, it sounds like if anything, it's serving them even more. Just the structure of having that yeah. small group and having that ability. Like in many ways, you've actually created what's so interesting about this is that you're actually supporting them in more ways than just on a one-on-one basis by having the coaching board, all of the, you know, the module work, all of the group calls, all of the opportunities that they have throughout the process to really, whether it's just being an observer of that coaching or being coached themselves. So that's definitely something that I have experienced as well. And I see with many, many clients when we move into that group format is the power of group coaching. I definitely think that that is such a benefit of, you know, offering group group programs. And so um, you've really demonstrated in a just a quick way, like the power of that in your own business. And so what I love also is that it's really allowed you to help so many people, so many clients. So talk to us about how many clients because we were looking at the numbers just the other day, how many clients have you really been able to serve mm-hmm. with this in just the last few months? Yeah. Well, and first I just want to say too, like that was really important to me because I couldn't get behind a program that I didn't feel like was as good as what I was offering before. Mm. And so that that is just really, really important to me, kind of going back to what what do, focusing on them instead of Yes. Me. And and it's cool for me to see how they can both like help each other, right? When they help more, I am also helped. Yeah. Yeah. They're not in correlation or not in correlation. They're not in. They're not in. I can't think of it either. They're not fighting (laughs) against each other. Yeah. They're not fighting against each other. Yeah. They're not in conflict. They're not in conflict. conflict. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, There we go. (laughs) So my clients, um, right now I have 59 in my program. Wow. I think a couple of those were clients that I had worked with before I started with you that I just put in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And be part of it. Yeah. But yeah, most of those have come from um, yeah. us working together. Yeah. And, you know, I always say this, but because I do really feel this with all of my clients, I in so many ways, it's like we're just getting started, which is so, so exciting when I look at your business, Sarah. And I've, I know I've tell I tell you this all the time, but I see such, potential for the work that you're doing. And um, just on the grand scale, like when you think about like even the ripple effect of this, it's massive. It's really massive. And Mm -hmm. I think I'm so excited to, you know, be on this journey with you and to help support you in that and really um, creating even more of that as we move forward, because it's again, it's just, it's, it's a, it's something that I think, yeah, you're right. A lot of people are not willing to talk about. They're just not willing to go there, but there's, you've already demonstrated. There's so many people that are really looking for help. So do you have something to add to that? No, I was just going to say, I'm excited too. (laughs) So good. 
So good. That's so let's talk about some of the biggest transformations. So we've talked a lot about like your business and how mm-hmm. that structured and kind of moved from that transition from one-on-one into now groups. But let's talk a little bit about some of the inner transformations that you've had during this time mm-hmm. that have really helped you step more into being the leader of your business and um, leading your business, leading your clients and showing up as that that powerful coach to them. Yeah. And I remember that was one of the first things that you said to me when we were coaching was, yeah. hey, like, I want to encourage you to step into this leader energy of your business. Mm-hmm. And really be the expert here. And so that's, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm still working on it, but I'm way further than I was when we started. Um, just a lot of trust in me and trust in my past and what I have experienced and trust in higher power. That's been huge, huge for me. And then too, when I look back at my like my numbers, my books, I see the biggest shift in income. Yeah. At the same time, I had a big money mindset shift too in December. Yeah. <laughs> when I had mentioned to you, I was worried about, I was, I was just, my mind was going worst case scenario. What if we lose all of our money? We can't have any, yeah. you know, we can't live. Yeah. And yeah, we had a coaching session and you just kind of kicked my butt on that. And you're like, why are you spending your time <laughs> worrying about that? Like you could go and have a webinar and make all that money like this week for you to live this month. Like this is just wasted energy. Yeah. And I didn't recognize it as that before. Mm-hmm. I kind of thought, I don't know. I just, I hadn't done a lot of work on it. And I thought it was maybe just, I was supposed to be worried about it. Yeah. But as soon as I stopped that and I realized, oh, like this is easy. This is easy to make money and we're going to we're going to be fine. Like that's when I think I made like over 50k in like the next yeah. 2 months. Two yeah. And a half months after yeah. that. It was massive. Yeah, cuz you had a big so, launch too, right? We did okay. another launch in that time. Let's I remember that conversation. And I had a big so, lunch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that because I remember that conversation and then I remember some follow-up boxers on that too that we had as a boxer. I think we had some boxer exchanges on that. Yeah. So yeah, I could see that that was a really a big deal for, for you. And, you know, from my observation, my perspective looking at that, you know, was so interesting about what came up for you, Sarah, was that you know, some of this I think had been carried down, right? Like when we really look at where this all came from, you had mentioned like even grandparents and certain things that as you were growing up, you were able to become aware of, right? That were coming through that I think was pretty major. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. I was thinking about it and I was thinking about Anyways, just our coaching and, and I realized and I recognized, right, well, of course, like that's kind of how I had grown up is like we're always penny pinching and we're always mm-hmm. just really aware and it's really mm-hmm. smart to do that. And it's really smart to be, you know, just worried about worst case scenario when it comes to money. And then I'm thinking about the stories we would always laugh because my grandparents were millionaires. Yeah. And they would go, <laughs> they would go <laughs> to the buffets and hide rolls in their bags. <laughs> Right. And they would save all their old vacuums in case they needed a vacuum part. And just like, <laughs> like there was no reason for them to be worried about that. And then yeah. I saw that in myself. I was like, there's no reason for me. Like I look yeah. at, we're, we're fine. Yeah. Yeah. But my mind just wants to go. Wasn't that I'm like, so this is exactly what my grandparents did. Totally. I thought that was so fascinating when that came through for you, because like, this is, you know, my belief with, with all of the work that I do and you know this, of course, but so much of what we carry around, so much of what I call that is in like the driver's seat that's actually driving us forward are things that we're not conscious of, right? They're things that we're just carrying. They're patterned, they're conditioned yeah. thoughts and beliefs. And I'm I'm such a believer in that because I see that I've experienced that myself and just see it over and over with clients. And I I just think it's so important to always be looking at those things because a lot of times, you know, that consciousness isn't there, right? It's just literally, it's a habit. It's literally a conditioning that we have that we can only start to really overcome Mm -hmm. once it actually surfaces, once we can actually see it for what it is. Yeah. And that's why I think it's so important to have a coach. I'm always going to have a coach. Agreed. Agreed. Because they see things I can't. Yeah. 
yeah, it's, it's huge. So on that note, what kind of advice would you have for coaches that were maybe, are maybe in a position like you were a year ago, or just kind of starting out trying to build, having some of these thoughts, like, I don't know if this is going to work. Like what, what advice would you give to them? Yeah. Well, my go-to thought that I've heard a lot of other coaches say that I just love is as long as I don't give up, this is happening. As long as I don't give up, I'm going to make it. And that's just so true. It's just so true. And so if if it's what you want, as long as you never stop, you're going to have it. Absolutely. Of course. There's so many examples of that. That's not even a question. And then too, what what I think has created a lot of success for me is when I am focused on my clients and not me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so that helped me find the niche that, yep. you know, really wants to pay me. So I was yep. more focused on them than my, than me. Right. Yep. Yep. And two, when I find myself getting worried, am I good enough? You know, all the drama, mm-hmm. I just try to go back there. It's not about me. Like there are so many people who need yes. this, who need exactly what I can offer. And yeah, so those two. And then also I'm really big about B minus work. Okay. Putting B minus work out there because if you look at my stuff, like none of my stuff is perfect. <laughs> my <laughs> my webinar isn't perfect. My ads aren't perfect. My sales page isn't perfect. And that's what I'm moving into is I want to just kind of hone all that in a little bit right. and get it better. That's not perfect, but my messaging is really um, kind of spot on. And so if you can just focus on your messaging and less on the other stuff, the tech, exactly, you know, how to say something, just focus on getting the messaging down. That's been really helpful for me. And that's what we do in in your program. That's what we spend so much time doing. Oh, it's the basis of everything. Yeah. I, that's such great advice. I would love for you to talk a little bit about like just how having more of a strategy has helped you. And because we've talked about like the mindset and that's always Mm going to be the foundation. I'm, firm believer, it's always going to be 80% mindset, 20% strategy. But one of the things I do coach and we spend a lot of time on is the strategy. Are things Mm -hmm. like your message? Are things like, where is your audience? How do we connect to them? How are we going to build really the infrastructure of your business? Mm -hmm. How are we structuring your programs, right? So that you can actually deliver Mm -hmm. the work that you're here to deliver and serve the clients that you're here to, to serve. What what do you think has been the biggest shift in terms of like having that type of support or having that type of work, having gone through my six month program and and going through that? Like what has been a big shift with you there? Yeah. The first thing that comes to mind is finding a strategy that works for your goals. Mm -hmm. So you can have goals, but if you don't really have a roadmap to get there, you're not going to get there. And that's what I loved about working with you is that it was really personalized to me and what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Do you think it was helpful to have a strategy? So helpful. Like, do you feel like that that eliminated like half the doubt right there? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes. It eliminated the strategy. Yes. It got rid of so much of the brain drama in the first place. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So So, good. Right. Yeah. So, so what I love about that is, doesn't it allow you just to like, again, like just put all of that aside because you have a roadmap, right? Like you can see Mm -hmm. the path, Mm -hmm. right? And then just focus, be able to focus on your clients. That's, that is why I do what I do because I do see a lot of people get stuck in, in the spin, (laughs) the spin cycle of, but the how, but the how, right? Yes. Well, and that's what you had said to me during, I remember our, our first call, you were saying, Like, it's really, I was like, I'm worried that I'm going to buffer by hiring a coach that's just me buffering and not doing the work. And you're like, um, it's actually the opposite because you're doing so much buffering right now, worried about Mm. what exactly to do. Let's just drop that. I'll tell you what to do (laughs) and you can do it. (laughs) Yeah. We'll figure out what we're going to do. Right. And then we go do it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really important. And I, you know, it's a fine line. Like we don't, one of the things I'm always looking at is the strategy will only be as good as the person behind it, right? As the coach, as the mindset that is really being cultivated behind it. What scares me sometimes a little Mm -hmm. bit is when I see like no strategy and like just what I call like the throwing the spaghetti at the wall, because at the end of the day, a business needs some structure. A business needs certain things to, to survive and to grow and to thrive. And 
I know in my own experience, again, like early on, not having that really created a lot of confusion and doubt for for me. And it really wasn't until I leaned into, you know, all of the the strategic parts of it that I was able to see, okay, this is how, this is how this actually works, right? Even though I had like, I've got an MBA, I've got a business background, like I've worked in marketing sales my entire career. It's a different thing when it's your, when it's your own business. And so um, I just think that it's really powerful. I would just encourage all of you listening. You know, there has to be some element, I, I believe of that, of knowing where, where you're going and certain things that are in place in your business in order to support the growth of your business. Because the the truth is for you, Sarah, like you're a great example to have 60 clients in a matter of, you know, a few months and be supporting that volume of clients. Like, unless you would have, ha- you can't do that without certain things in place. You can't do that without certain structures, without certain right. things that we have built for that yes. allow the space for that. Do you agree with that? Yeah. If, yeah. if I wouldn't have started, absolutely. Absolutely. I think about it. I talked to my husband about this too. I'm like, if I wouldn't have started working with Amanda right now, I would still just be spinning in. Like, I, I'm, I'm only working with you know, seven clients at mm-hmm. a time. Mm-hmm. And here I am with like 60. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's because of the strategy. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so good. And so important. All right, Sarah, is there anything else you'd love to share with the audience, with the listeners before before we go? I just have one other thought on the strategy too. And we kind of touched on this, but it really just having that in place. I mean, it's like with anything, it's like with my clients who I'm helping quit porn, like there's the mindset. Absolutely. That's huge. But then they also have to learn some other skills. Um, And without it, they wouldn't be able to do it. That's because, you know, that's what they've been doing. They've been trying to quit porn without the emotional skills that they need to do it. So it's just the same with business. And when you have those, I see that with my clients, once they understand those skills, their confidence just skyrockets. Yes. And then, and then they can actually, then they are in the right mindset to go and do it. It's the same with business. Once I know, like I have a plan and I see how it's going to work. Yep. It's just, yeah. Okay. We're just going to try and it's going to work and confidence. Pew. Yep. Here we go. So good. So good. So tell us what you are working on now, Sarah. Tell us where we can find you. So if anybody is listening, knows of someone that is struggling in this area. That is sure, looking for yeah. some help. Tell us where they can find you. Yeah. Um, so my podcast is a great resource. I just um, started it a couple months ago. If you look up Sarah Brewer or Overcome Pornography for Good, you can also find me at sarahbrewer.com. Nice. And Instagram. I'm on Instagram too, a lot. Amazing. And let's talk about what's next, Sarah. So what what is your what is your goal moving forward? What are you working on? Yeah. My big goal, I want to get 50K months. Nice. And so that is that is our next step. I'm super excited to help you do that. Thank you so yeah, much for you. being on today, Sarah. You're doing amazing work. I'm so proud of you. Y'all be on the lookout. 50K months are happening and it's just going to be a matter of time. We'll have Sarah back on and share what that Woo-hoo. part of the journey was like, right? So good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're I so, so welcome. appreciate you, Amanda. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. I appreciate you, Sarah. It's an honor to work with you. All right. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, if you're ready for a real breakthrough in your business and want to grow and scale your business to at least six figures or more in annual revenue, I invite you to apply for my exclusive program, The Mastermind at amandacarlstadcoaching.com forward slash the dash mastermind. I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Life Coach Business Podcast. If you want to learn more about how to build, grow, and scale your business and accelerate your results, visit amandacarlstadcoaching.com.